Hey tennis lovers, Coach Pat and Coach Anita here. Thank you for filming Coach Anita. Today we're going to take a little trip through the history of tennis, starting with the tennis ball. Here is an antique can of tennis balls with a early champion on named Ellsworth Vines, if you'd like to Google that name. And the thing about these balls, they were the latest thing because they were plugless. So prior to this, every ball had a plug in them somewhere. This is a tennis wood racket that always required a frame because the rackets were made out of wood and with changes in humidity in the air, they would warp or become like a banana or a scallop. So you had to have a, you had to have a four point screw down frame to keep that racket intact, especially over the winter. Here we have some antique rackets, starting with the junior racket. It's probably almost made out of balsa wood. It's a tiny racket. It's got the original gut in the racket. Some of them I had to restrain, but this is the original gut. And so it's probably some kind of animal intestines uh, strung. In the stringing, you have a little piece of string, not gut at the bottom, where it's rough on one side and smooth on the other. So to start a tennis match, you would say rough or smooth, and then you would spin the racket. Moving along, here we have what's probably an antique ladies racket with a small square grip. This one is called the Cleveland, and it has a screw in it to keep the wood, all the layers of wood together. This is typical of all the wood rackets. They had to have a screw in them at the throat. This grip is about four and a half. These rackets are pretty heavy. This would be a man's racket. This is almost a five inch grip. It's a big, uh, wide grip. It's a pretty heavy racket, probably at least three or four ounces heavier than what we use today. This is made by Wright Ditson, an American company at the time. So, great. So now we'll go around the room and we'll look at the evolution of tennis rackets a little more. Here we have some more wood rackets and they're evolving with more decorations on them, better grips, better building technology where you don't have the screws in the side. Uh, getting up to the point where you now start putting a little fiberglass or a laminate on it as a decoration. A poster of the Miami Open Tournament, which we love here in South Florida. And then moving into some of the more popular rackets in the 1970s, Wilson and Dunlop. Those are the basic two big names, kind of like Babolat is today. Here we have a couple more antique rackets uh, from the 70s, Billie Jean King and one of the first aluminum rackets, first metal rackets, lighting companies that made lamps out of aluminum were the first people to usually get into some of these. Back to the wall, we have a hybrid of aluminum and metal and wood, which is kind of weird. Then you have Jimmy Connors racket that he played with his whole career. Next up is Arthur Ashe's racket, not exactly his racket, but the model he used. And then after that, you have another teardrop design and that was our, our third design in the line was a teardrop. So what's old is new again in terms of marketing. And then we get into more space age technology with rackets not having anything but uh, composite materials, fiberglass, graphite, uh, things like boron, probably influenced by the aerospace uh, industry. Bringing this up to today, this is a 9.9 .9 ounce Wilson Clash racket that's very popular. We're about to string it on my stringing machine here, which I really enjoy. It's a, it's a manual machine. It gives me good consistent results. It's got four clamps and I'm able to reproduce the stringing exactly from frame to frame. That's it for today. See you on the court.